shingle on the on the. We were using a stained shingle on the uh, on the carriage house mass or barn mass, and which also I think helps break the building down so it doesn't read quite so large and blocky. So I think change of cladding material really goes a long way in doing that, um, making the white clapboard mass more prominent and trying to make the carriage house more secondary in nature. And Tracy, you're 100% correct. I mean, using the glass vocabulary really traits sort of a separation between those um, versus just more, more wall surface and envelope um, bridging across that face. So if the majority of the commission is comfortable with the, the square footage on the home in relationship to the other homes. Are we? Um, I don't think so. Here we oh, are. I, I, I would say that I am. Um, I have a couple of other suggestions that might help also diminish um, the volume of the home. Um, one of them is I see in, from the front facade, the right side, uh, the, the, there's a main gable and then there's a gable that comes off the right and a gable that comes off the left. And the gable on the right is set down from the ridge on the main gable. And I'm wondering if that can also be done on the left side. Also, there's, you know, you have on the right side of this, the house, you have a, a dormer and um, on the second story, and that does a lot to diminish the face of that side. And I'm wondering if there's a way to break up the, the, the plane of the left side, not with maybe a, a dormer, but perhaps setting, setting back the second story from the porch or the reverse. I'm just wondering if there's other ways to diminutize this house a little bit um, to, so it reads less. Mark, thoughts? Well, I'll be honest, we did, there was a real strong reason why we, we provided the shed dormer and uh, an eave line at the meeting rail on the right-hand side, and we didn't do it on the left, was to try and create some asymmetry to the structure. So it didn't appear to be a gabled mass, it was simply two wings that sliced through it, because we thought that's actually how it would read. So we wanted to create some distinction from the west mass to the east mass and did that by altering the eave line. So it was, it was very specific. Uh, some real thought was given to why we did it that way. So uh, there might be a story. In, it, we, with all these buildings, you try and create a story and you, you want to create a sense of this additive massing. And the, the house grew over time. And that the main mass clearly was the first structure and probably the left mass was built with that. And then secondarily, maybe the right side came later. So um, my fear is by, by altering the left um, and not that Catherine, you didn't suggest that other options as well, but um, you know, we could potentially pull the uh, screen porch mass forward to break the roof plane if, um, if, if that's something that's uh, desired, uh, maybe creating a little bit of a, a pent roof then above that, that would set back to the second floor. Um, I think from planning, we have some, some challenges in terms of head height and access to if we start dropping the eave line on that left side uh, as well. So um, I think maybe something we can certainly look at, but um, I feel kind of strongly about trying to keep the two eaves distinct from one another. Um, so it just doesn't look like this symmetrical arrangement. Was any consideration giving to a two-car garage instead of a three-car? I know you have a big, massive bedroom up there, but it's a lot of space. Would it have to be three-car? Um, the clients desire three vehicles. Uh, you know, again, going back, it's a it's an acre and a half property. We're using really a, a small portion of the lot to accommodate this, and without giving the scale of the homes, three bays, and those three bays, as you can even see in this rendering are tucked behind retaining wall. It goes into a parking court. So it, you really won't see three faces of garage doors. I, I, wasn't, I don't really care about how many bays. I was trying to see if there's any way to shrink that. It almost looks to me like a second house sitting behind the front house, but any way of bringing that down a bit. I see. Um, yeah, possibly something we could explore if, if the board feels that way.
Any other comments? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to point out, I believe we have some abutters, so. Um, okay, I apologize. Like um, nope. Are there any abutters that would like to make any comments? Yes, uh, Achevo 8 Home Middle Lane. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. I just want to, well, one thing is compliment the board. I feel I really have nothing to add relative to the house. You're doing a great job attempting to have it uh, mend or blend in with the home metal lane. But my only comment is, as I sit here, is home metal lane is a lane, no sidewalks. Mm -hmm. You're saying it's the south side, four houses, North side, there's only one. This will be the second. It all it almost you're trying to compare it to Main Street. This is not on Main Street. There's five houses on Home Meadow Lane. Mm -hmm. I don't I just get offended when you're talking about six thousand, five thousand, seven thousand houses on Main Street. This isn't Main Street, Home Meadow Lane. Four houses on the south, one house on the north, existing house. And that's it. Hopefully, and I think you're attempting to have this house fit in the home meadow lane. And I welcome a new house. I welcome any new neighbors. But that's my comment. Don't, it's almost like a, a, a mirage when you're talking about the north, south. It does not fit with the houses on Home Meadow Lane, but that doesn't mean it shouldn't be built and shouldn't fit in as best it can. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shabo. Anyone else? Um. Trying to think of the best next step. <clears throat> the um, does, I mean, Andrew, do you have any thoughts on whether well, we I'm make just, a motion or? Um, you know, I I don't know that that it doesn't seem to me that there's been a, you know universal agreement. Um, and I'm just wondering if we could uh, rename the key issues. And um, I know, Mark, you have, um, you have, and your client have strong feelings about certain things. I'm just wondering where there might be room based on the commission's issues for some compromise. So, um, you know, if each of you want to just articulate your primary issues without going into, you've already explained them, but if you could just list them, that'd be great. Carol, you wanna start? Yeah, uh, I, hard to prioritize. I think my salient issue would be what I see as big modern windows, inappropriate. I mean, our, going back, looking through the guidelines again, it's very clear over and over again that the the window should be appropriate for an historic district. The machinery made to make those windows wasn't even invented back in the day, but um, I just, I think it's an eyesore. It sticks out. I think if that were to disappear, I wish the whole barn section could shove over behind the house a little further, but I don't see how that happens. Um, so that, that would be my main issue. I'm, gl I'm glad it's set way back off the road. I think that helps a lot. Catherine? I guess I'd like to see um, more attempts to create the illusion of a smaller mass here, um, something that can marry the difference between the big and the small a little bit better. I'm sorry, uh, Catherine, can you be a little more specific with the big and the small? Oh, with the big and the small houses, sorry. Um, yeah, I guess I'd like to see some kind of 
middle ground is what I would, I would hope for between the, the more modest homes and the, the large scale. Thank homes. you. Daniel, do you have any comments or? Yeah, I, I appreciate Mark's comment about you know, this project telling a story, viewing the main body of the house is original with the iterations over the years. I guess seeing it from that perspective, I'd be curious to know, you know, looking at it now, the main body, the central part with the shutters, I, I get where he's going with that and then saying everything else is a later addition. However, it seems to kind of speak now where that main body is original and then everything else was done in a two, three year period very recently on top of it. So I don't know if there's a way to kind of soften that story that you were telling where there's multiple additions to the year of, you know, the way we use the house today is different than 200 years ago, 100 years ago. So that's the reason for these additions. I don't know if there's a way to kind of tell that story a little bit better as if it was a house that's original. I don't know if that makes sense, Mark, but. I can tell a story. <laughs> Thank you. Justin, did you have anything? You oh, I'll say that I'm in closest harmony with Carol's uh, comments. The... I love you too, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Carol. That the, the uh, you know, I, I like the design. I think it's a beautiful design. But those windows do really stand out in a very non-historic way. I think if those windows could look more in keeping with the historic neighborhood, I would have, uh, I would absolutely unrestrained support for the proposal. I don't um, necessarily have anything to add. Um, so, we're we have, to, Michael, so, did we hear from Michael? I, think I would just reiterate my comments about the massing of the yeah. connector in the, the, the garage. I think, um, you know, I have um, less of a concern about some of the modern detailing. It's a new house in a historic district. Um, and I think overall, its appearance <clears throat> is fitting for a district with some modern um, elements added, given that this is a 2021 house and not an 1821 house. Um, but it's really the mass of the garage and the connector that um, I think um, challenge the appropriateness um, in total for this house. Very good. Thank you. So uh, All right. are we looking we'll at move. a continuance? Looks like Jeff froze up. Yeah. Sorry. Jeff yeah. asked if we're looking at a continuance. Yes. I think Jeff Mark, froze. Yes. I'm sorry. Mark, do you feel uh, given given the the comments, um, the primary concerns, um, do you feel like you can work with some of those? Yeah, we'll, we'll circle back with our client and see if we can address the board's concerns. Certainly. So um, let's see, it's early in December and I can't remember the exact date. Let me see. Tracy, do you happen to know? I mean, Miss Tracy. Uh, not you. <laughs> so there's a Miss Tracy and there's Tracy. I think I have it on the ninth. That yeah, I think right. you're right. Yep. That sounds right. Okay, thank you. So it'd be December the 9th that we continue. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot. Hey. And Jeff, okay. I'm going to have to re um before we finish this tonight, um, we'll either need an extension. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And Scott's on and uh, he can pick up. I'm Hi, actually Scott. going into another town. Okay, great. 
Thank you. Thanks again. Bye bye. Andrea. Thanks, everyone. Yes. Do we have a plan for the cabana or guest house or whatever the other building is? I don't think I've seen that. Isn't there a pool house or something on the property now? Yeah, although yeah. I think it's is it too far, too far in the rear? Eight three one. Yeah, very far back, and we have to remember there's going to be a pool fence. Yeah, I'm not so sure that we see it. But I do, it is on A31. I do see okay. that. I'm looking at it, but it's hard to see what it's going to look like. Or size or. Is it heated? Does it have a bathroom? Does it have. Well, it doesn't concern us, but. <laughs> oh, we, do we don't have anything to do with the cabana? Well, we don't have any, we, we don't care whether it's heated or anything else. Um, it's just the it's design and whether or not we can even see it. I'm not so sure that we'd even be able to see it. Yeah, I think but, once the pool fence is in, you might see the top, the roof. I'm thinking of the neighbors uphill on Home Meadow as you go up to the other houses. That's a good that, point. We should drive up there. The elevation rises almost 25 feet. I don't think, and it will be fully treed. They won't be able to see down the lot. Is that it over on the left? Yeah, okay. All right. Is that a garage door that we're looking at? What kind, is that a? Um... An outdoor shower framed in cedar, natural to weather, which will turn gray over time. Okay, thank you. Just realize this house has no chimneys. Oh, there's one by the pool house. The main building doesn't have a chimney of any kind. Well, right. The, the main mass in the rear does have a fieldstone chimney. Yeah, I see that one. Yeah. No fireplaces. In okay. the main mass, there is, yes. In the rear. All right, we should move on. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, everyone. Next on the agenda, three Blaisdell Road. Thank you for waiting. I think um, we have Mr. Zaccardi, Mr. and Mrs. Zaccardi, and Mr. Matson. Or Matson, I'm sorry. Why did I say that? Thank you for the visit on Saturday. Um, there's no updated plans, right, Andrea? No, um, except that um, there was a revised plan, uh, site plan submitted that included the location of the septic, um, but I'm not sure that, um, you know, at this point it may be a little premature to deal with that. Um, I think we're mainly concerned about the, um, you know, a, approving discussion of the demolition, the proposed demolition of all buildings. <clears throat> so that's what we'll focus on tonight, the demolition of the two homes. Is it a garage and a shed or is it just a? It's the garage, a shed and the two homes, you're correct. And we do have a separate we do have a separate um, application specifically for the demolition. Okay. So we can deal with that one and then we can talk about the three bedroom home. Okay. So let's focus on the demo. <clears throat> so Carol, Catherine, Justin, Daniel, we were all on site. Michael wasn't there. Um, does anyone have it? First off, I'll jump in and, and say that I, I don't think we'd be losing significant historic value if, if those properties were to, uh, demolished. I'd add I'd like the sooner the better. I'd like to chip in, <laughs> if we don't mind. Um, I actually went down to the basement. I think Justin and I were the only ones who did. Um, the, the basement is a rubble stone basement. 
And um, on the way out, I was able to catch sight of a hand-hewn beam. I consulted an expert on Hingham houses, a man who's worked on historic houses his whole career in Hingham. And he said um, that a hand-hewn beam probably predates 1850. And that um, same with the rubble basement actually can be as early as 1700. So um, I think that the vinyl siding on this house is obscuring any details that might be present. Um, I think that while it's tiny, the, I'm talking about this specifically the yellow house, that the, 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 the diminutive size of it is actually more in keeping to the surrounding houses before the house opposite on um, Blaisdale was built. Um, I think that it's our job as um, pre preservationists of Hingham's history to value the, 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 the meek as well as the mighty. This one might not be a historic captain's home, but it might be a laborer's home or a farmer's home. And I just feel like um, just to tear it down as if it's nothing is not responsible by the commission. Um, unless we can really discern, you know, I'd really like to see someone who really, I'm just relaying to somebody what I saw, but I'd really love to see um, someone who knows a little bit more and outside someone to to look it over and just make sure that we're not doing something that we shouldn't be doing by demo demolishing this. Um, I'd also like to say that um, if this house were to be a one bedroom home that the existing white house that's a two bedroom, currently a two bedroom with some creativity and some good design, I think those um, the yellow house and a new structure could coexist on this lot um, in a harmonious way. That there's a lot of interest in ADUs currently in Hingham. And I think a lot of families would really love to have a small ADU on their property or a smaller house on their property that, to accommodate an older relative or um, adult children or children um, with special needs, that kind of thing. So I think. Um, I don't think that the, the little yellow house takes away from the White House and what the White House, the location of the White House could be. And I just would urge the commission to um, just look at it a little closer. I appreciate what you're saying, Catherine. And I'm wondering, Andrea, does this little house show up on any old maps? Could we um, actually, the form B um, talks about this house. Now, Keep in mind that this is all done from from the exterior. So, um, and looking at the Loring records, the the residence at Three Blaisdell, on the corner of Main Street, was built in 1949 in a traditional style. I'm just wondering, Catherine, to your point, if it's possible that there was an earlier structure on the site, mm -hmm. and perhaps. Uh, I really believe there is. I, the, the rubble, the rubble, um, the rubble. I have a little spiel on this. I was looking in the. I was consulting the guidelines. So um, stone either dry laid without mortar or dressed with mortar. A combination of techniques was frequently used in dry laid stones below grade and above ground portions that were exposed to weather laid in full beds of lime mortar. Stone foundations were initially of rubble stone, irregular stones laid in no particular pattern, which this is, improve, um, and improved stone cutting technologies during the late 1700s led to the use of cut or dressed stone. So it's certainly a rubble foundation. And um, I think that vinyl is just killing it. And yeah. I think it could be adorable. <laughs> Could we get someone in to look at it? Look at the basement? Well, um, you know, it's up to the, I would have to point out that we, we if we wanted to do that, we sh probably should have done it by now. But that's not to say that we can't, but I'm just saying that. Um, we hadn't gotten in the basement before. That's true. That's true. I wonder if maybe a Peter Bickford yeah. or someone else who is really familiar with a lot of this stuff could just take a peek at it. I mean, 
I think the the dating, whether it's 1850 or 1700, doesn't really matter how old it is. It's more, um, can this property be developed, keeping this little house, some variation of this little house, maybe some of the inappropriate additions are removed and it's brought back to life with a little bit of, um, you know, thoughtful tending. Mm -hmm. And then it could potentially be on the lot with another home that could do what you, what the developers want to do. There are plenty of, we know very, very, very intimately that the two bedroom house can be quite generous in Hingham. And um, I think there's possibilities there. Would you grant them a uh, demolition permit for the back house? I will, I, Where they want to build, we I, could go ahead and let them start that. I feel comfortable with that. Um, don't forget there, but this, this would involve to have, at this point, they would have to seek a, um, um, a form A they have from the planning board, an A&R from the planning board. So to, they would have to separate this lot. And the question would be, um, is there enough frontage to have two lots? Well, it's well, not conforming as it is, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's a one bedroom and a two bedroom. It's actually two two bedrooms. It's actually a That's three bedroom true. and a one bedroom. And it's so sitting on the neighbor's land. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the, was the White House a two bedroom or a one bedroom? I believe it's just a one. I think so, yes. So I think there's- Mr. Madden. Mr. Madden is the one bedroom, uh, is the White House a one bedroom? The White House is a one bedroom. So maybe there's a way to make the yellow house a one bedroom and then create a, a, a beautiful, sympathetic type house where the white house is. Guest house. It isn't what? even, a, the, sep, the, the yellow house does not have a working cesspool at this point. Right. Yes, I understand that. I think there um, possibilities there that they could share a new cesspool, uh, septic and cesspool. No, there's two separate cesspools. There was nothing on that property when my grandfather purchased it in 1949, but a one bedroom with a bathroom that was not working. He built the addition, which made it a two bedroom, which we pulled all the permits for, and we have submitted to the health department. There was nothing there before. We searched all kinds of history on that lot. There might have been something in front of it, but there was nothing there. Would you have any objections to us bringing in a, an expert on old homes just to make we sure? We had that nine people, or how many people from the Historical Society? on their Saturday. Now everybody agreed. Now all of a sudden you don't? What? This, this uh, is starting to take way too long. And- Yeah, I think we're gonna I was, have to get I was somebody in, else involved. I was in the basement with Catherine. I, she pointed out the beam that's covered with mold and mildew as you were ducking through the, the cobwebs. To, I, I, if we bring in a Mr. Bickford, and he looks at the house and he goes, oh, that is a hand-hewn beam. Then what do you want us to do with the house that really needs a cesspool and just about everything else? You keep talking about making it adorable and nice and fine. They're nice little houses, but you're because of one beam, we're going to then recreate this whole house around the one beam again and maybe mm -hmm. turn the other one into something when in the beginning, everybody's saying, no, you have to knock everything down to make one. And we're just trying to do that. Um, it, it's, I have no problem talking to anybody, but to, to look at one beam that might be in a rubble basement, then what is your next step that you expect us to do? Well, Mr. Matten, um, I, I don't really know what to say. I guess I would say that maybe we peel back some of the siding, see what's under there. Maybe uh, you know what's under there right now? There's no insulation. There's a lot of mold in the back and the sidewall. That I've had contractors there because I wanted to fix them up. I wanted to make a nicer property for my son. 
We've had people in. They've looked at that. You know what? There's mold in there. There's mildew in there. That the electricity is sir. outdated. The cesspool is outdated. The plumbing is outdated. When you pull back that stuff, that's what you're going to find. I understand your position of trying to preserve things that have historical significance in a very nice town. I love Hingham. I, I understand what you're trying to do. You are making a giant size problem out of maybe a beam that was hand hewn because everything else around it is needs to go the little white house i'm embarrassed i actually wouldn't let people stay in there even if friends from or family from out of the, the state because i feel it's unsafe the yellow house isn't much better and pulling back the siding to see that there's no insulation that the two by fours aren't even two by fours they don't, they're not up to code. Everything else is not up to code. Then what are you going to do? So I, I just, I understand what you're trying to do. These properties need to go. Mr. Sakari can build a very nice three bedroom home that'll fit the neighborhood that some family will be thrilled to have in a nice town. I don't That's think that I've time. been on the commission where um, we've been faced with this kind of circumstance. So I'd love to hear what some of the other members have to say. I apologize for being angry, frustrated, whatever I am. It's just, I don't feel like I have any options. Um, and so, yes, please, I'll, I'm, I'll be glad to listen to anybody. Thank you, Mr. Matton. Um, Mrs. Matton, I think that, um, I, I'm sorry if we gave you the wrong impression. It was not decided, um, there was no discussion um or deliberation on saturday so this is the, this is the first time there's been oh, okay. any deliberation so i'm sorry if you thought it had already been decided and we're i didn't think it had already been decided <clears throat> my husband repeated to me what he just said transpired right mr bickford was there and no the... no he was not he oh was... who was the engineer larry no, it, it was just pe the people. The commission that members. The commission. Um, oh, okay. It was Daniel, okay. Okay. Mr. Clark, Mr. Shriver. Um, and no, okay. I misunderstood. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I'm open to Justin. I know you were there. I, I was there. And I, I, I want to reiterate that, that, that I, I think if these were demolished, we would not be sacrificing a, a historic gem. I'd like to add that I was not brave enough to go into the basement. Having had a recent fall, I thought I'd better not try it. Um, but if Catherine's right, and there is what could be the base of an old 17 something or other house, that throws this commission into a whole other range of activities. And it doesn't mean you wouldn't be able to take it down or do something with it, but we'd have to reconsider the whole thing. So I'm thinking the easy way to do it is to get Mr. Bigford or someone like him with that kind of knowledge to go in, take a quick look. If he thinks it's a very old foundation of another old building, then we should regroup and think about what we're doing. Does it mean it can't come down or be rebuilt or moved or- Well, I have a question. Up? Yeah. I have a question. If per some chance he does say that one beam is from an old building, who is going to, I don't know, reconstruct another house on that? We certainly aren't. I don't and think- we, And I, we're certainly not going to, I'm not going to get into the money aspect of it, but- I don't know, Larry, it's up to you, but right now I want to get a lawyer tomorrow. <laughs> well, this is wanna... ridiculous. This I is think... wasting everybody's time. It's gone on way too long. There's some old beam that God knows where it came from. Pete is willing to put up a very nice three-bedroom house, work with the historical commission. The, every neighbor on that street wants the house is gone. So, I mean, I'm done. So, Larry, you can take it from here. I am done. We've done think, everything we have to try to preserve that house. That My grandfather practically built that house. I wanted to live there, but it's impossible. I'm Mrs. sorry, Matt, you your grandfather built it? 
Yes, he did. When he moved yeah. in, it was a bare structure with a one bedroom and a kitchen, and that's it. What year would that have been? He put an addition on. I pulled all the permits. What, what year did he build? 1949. He didn't build the entire house. He built three quarters of it. So yeah. he, and um, he completely well, built the other house. He completely Mrs. built Matt, the white house. Was, um, let's see, it mentions here, can you, it mentions the name Robert N. and Doris E. Demings. Demings of right. That's my Dorchester. grandmother. Well, there you go. Um, they purchased the narrow wedge-shaped lot at Three Blaisdell Road from the estate of Ethel M. Searles in nineteen forty. I actually know her. Uh huh. And they built their new house in nineteen forty nine and remained in residence until nineteen sixty four. So that is the story of. Um, that is in our form B. Oh, that's actually incorrect. My um, Mrs. Stoddard sold it to my grandfather. My grandfather was there till he died in 1988. I Good think. Good to know. Okay, thank you, uh, Daniel. I, I, did you have your finger up? Like you wanted no, to? Uh, yeah, I can. Comment if Tracy wants to do it at the appropriate time. Sure, I have thoughts too. So, I think it's, I think the structure itself, the house itself, uh, lacks historic significance. Uh, the foundation may be older. I've worked on buildings that have rubble stone foundations built in the late 1890s, early 1900s. So, uh, I'm not to say there's 1700s, 1800s. I don't think there's real definitive dates. So, uh, if I had to speculate, I would say there may have been something a little bit older. It's long gone. Uh, more recently, a lot of additions put over top of it. There may be a single component that, or two that are historic, but I don't think those justify uh, saving the entire house. The entire house. I agree because um, even if the foundation and the beam, you know, go back to the to early 1900s, late 1800s, none of it's going to conform to today's standards. And by the time they upgrade what it would have to be in order to build a ADU or a shed or a cabana or whatever it was, it wouldn't. You would never even you would never know that it was rubble anymore. They would build a six inch concrete wall in front of it. Um, you know, maybe maybe it's it's worth asking that the, the beams are um, uh, salvaged and maybe there's a way that, that Mr. Zaccardi can, you know, incorporate that millwork into a fireplace mantle or something like that. Um, you know, or, or use that flagstone or that, that rubble stone, excuse me, um, in some feature in the new home or something. But, um, you know, I did go down into the basement. It was barely five feet tall. Um, you know, I saw the rubble. I saw, I was actually behind you, uh, Catherine, going up the steps when you saw the beam. Um, I think it was only about a, a two by four or something. It wasn't a very big beam. Um, it was just, it was right at the steps there. Um, so from my perspective, uh, I, I don't necessarily think it's worth saving the house and maybe worth saving a few, you know, small relics from the, from the foundation and the structure. Go ahead, Mr. Zaccardi. I, I, um, I remod do some remodeling and constantly repurpose uh, beams from old houses. I like the patina and things like that. And I could certainly go through the basement and pick out what I would repurpose. And um, many houses that are bought and remodeled were built in the 30s. And they have these field stone foundations. It was basically what was around to use. Mm -hmm. And those stones were probably from the area. Uh, yes, but um, very rarely, the mortar was only chinked in there to stop any water from coming through, which never worked. 
And uh, many times, even a house I'm remodeling right now, uh, there's a seed of lally columns that I will leave, but you know, when I have the house inspected, uh, someone uh, purchasing it would want a, um, a concrete uh, pillar built that an engineer would approve. But I constantly reuse, repurpose uh, pieces of wood from houses. Right now, I, my garage is half full of them. I just, I pick them out and I can't throw them out. And so they're in my garage still. And I, I use them constantly. But yeah, Peter, and, um, Peter, could you use some of those rocks and, and the beams if need be? For I constantly the, reuse field a stone. fireplace or something of that nature in the new house? I, I constantly reuse field stone from foundations to make uh, stone walls and things like that, or also the decorative part of a fireplace. I'm certainly willing to do that again like I have been my whole career. Catherine, how would you feel about that? Is that a solution? I guess I just wanted to bring that up, all these issues up to the commission. Um, you know, I, I too have driven down Main Street and seen this little ghetto house and thought, what is that little, little house? It doesn't really fit with everything, it, you know? <laughs> so I, the churn is here, the, 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 the conundrum for me. Um, I, I, I don't, yeah, I don't even know what it, I, I guess I just feel like we still don't know what, what we have. And um, I think there's plenty of houses that have been added on to over time, you know, and that doesn't diminish the original bit that is the antique, the, the 1700, the 1800, whatever it is, we don't even know what it is. So that's the problem I have. Um, and the tiniest house in Hingham, the littlest house in Hingham is one of our little gems that there's a school, you know, children's story written about it because it's the tiniest little house in Hingham. What if yeah, this is the other tiniest house, house in Hingham and we just bulldoze it? Um, I know, but so, the, the, the current owner has already noted that he's had several contractors come in over the years to look at both of these structures and, you know, they're, 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 they've been told over and over they're not salvageable. Um, I think that electricians the current owner work on has, them, plumbers don't work on them. You think the current owner what? Has, has, um, has, can we let Tracy finish his comments yeah. first? Yeah, the current please. owner has very strong feelings about this house. Like I said, my grandfather pretty much built it. Nothing was put in that house prior to 1949. That one beam you saw was an old piece of wood that was put together for exactly what Peter said. My grand, my father, who's not with us, he was a fireman, did everything he could, as you could tell if you went in the house, to patch that up, to just make it livable for my grandfather. He was a double amputee, he didn't have any legs, and my father Mickey Mouse everything just to hold it together. You have all these people that were here, and pretty much everyone agrees with us. I don't know, is this a type of thing where you can take a vote or is that not the case because I went to the doctors on Friday not that any of you care but my blood pressure I suffer from low blood pressure it was off the charts you are putting our family through a completely unnecessary hell we've waited we've done everything you said we've gotten all kinds of opinions Peter's willing to work with you and you're worried about one piece of wood that was held together by my poor father who just did everything he could to make it livable to my grandfather before he died. They, he lived there since 1949. He completely built the White House from an empty lot, which that shows in the permits. And he's added, like I said, three quarters of this house. I pulled permits from 1949 to 1951. There were nine permits for, for additions. I stopped in 1951. I didn't think we would need any more. And you want to like look at one beam, really? Uh, I'm not. Tracy, did you want to finish? Or all or I was saying is you've had several. You've had several contractors over the years look at these structures, and and um, they've all been telling you basically the same thing. I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but some contractors won't work on it electric electrical won't make the connection um 
you know, I, I don't see anything that's salvageable other than, you know, finding some relics, whether it's a beam, whether it's some flagstone or something like that, and looking for ways to incorporate it into um, a future project. I, I think that would be a great solution. Uh, I, I would love to see if something could be saved and used. I mean, it, it's good for the family. Uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I have had my, my uh, electrical contractor, he's in Hingham, visit, he was the last one to visit along with the gas company and the plumber that they said they would not work on the little white house. They would not work on it. That there, there wasn't, it wasn't fixable. It's like, cause there's uh, the mold and everything in the walls. And then the electricity needs to be all redone. The plumbing, plumbing, there's no heat in the white house. Um, and then the yellow house is not as bad there. It's, it's livable. Uh, the septic system's being pumped every three weeks right now because it's failing. And apparently the electricity isn't working exactly right. So there, I understand the idea of trying to preserve the history, but I don't think fixing up these houses is the answer. If, if Mr. Zaccardi can use some of the material to save part of the house, I think that'd be an excellent solution. So sorry for the, sorry for the anguish. And don't the, be it, sorry, that's fine. Um, I, been, I just want to create clarity here. I'm not suggesting keeping the White House at all. I, I agree with you that the White but House. I don't think we should keep either one. I'm sorry. It, it, I just wanted to, some clarity there. That's not what I was suggesting. Trying to, I understand, but trying to save the yellow one and not, it just, I had neighbors that I know on that street that stopped me. I was there a little earlier than, than you guys the other day that wanted to know if they gave me a petition. Could I present that? Because they want the houses taken down. That's that two two different neighbors. I and I understand that's not really your what you're about, and that's not the history, and it's not any of that stuff. It's just I think we're at the point they can come down. Mr. Zakari can save part of it, and a whole it it, it it's a win win for everybody, and some family will have a nice new house in Hingham. Let me also add to that. I I am. We do have um, something that describes the history and architectural um, importance of the house, but neither of them, um, neither is really compelling. Um, and I think our consultants um, have done their research. Um, they use the history of the town of Hingham, the genealogies, um, the Julian Loring records and um, Donald Robinson's 200 years in South Hingham um, published in 1980. So uh, I think that, um, I think at least we have evidence to support the fact that there's nothing historically significant or really architecturally significant about the existing house. And whether it you know, was built on a prior foundation, who knows, but um, you know, Mrs. Matten has made it very clear that she, she pulled all the permits and her grandfather built the house. So there we Andrew, have it. Andrew, you have to justify this to what, the state? Yeah. And you feel comfortable doing that? I do, in no, this no. case. Okay. okay, that makes it good. So if there's no further comments, does anyone want to make a motion? I'll make a motion. I just had one comment before that, Tracy. Um, I just wanted to, for a second, kind of defend Catherine here, just because you know, we're a board of five people that are voting on this tonight. And you know, having five members, we're not meant to be getting into group thinking and all just <laughs> following the course. So I think Catherine posed some good questions, some juxtaposition uh, type of questions for us as a committee to really think about. Um, and I think that's, you know, that's all of our duty on this commission to be able to think independently and push each other and get our get different viewpoints together and come to a consensus. So Catherine, I mean, you may be in the minority tonight, but I do appreciate you, you know, sharing and, and speaking strongly to your positions. I mean, you the next one may go differently. So I, I just wanted to send that. Um, so I'll make a motion that 
uh, we uh, approve uh, a demolition of a garage in two houses at Three Blaisdell Road. And a shed, Daniel. And a shed. Seconded. May I, I, we wanted to add, I think, the, um, that Mr. Zaccardi uh, would use whatever he could from the existing yellow house to, um, to repurpose in his new construction. Is I think, that what? I think going um, into the beams and, and, you know, if any of the rubble foundation. Was possible. Okay. Um, Carol seconded it. <clears throat> Justin, how do you vote? I vote aye. Catherine, how do you vote? I vote no. Carol, how do you vote? I vote aye, but thank you, Catherine. I do think you're right at looking at this. Daniel, how do you vote? Aye. Motion the demo of the structures passes four to one. I vote aye, thank you, sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. So um, then our, our next hearing then, um, you're all set, Mr. and Mrs. Matten. Thank and, you, Andrea. Um, we will, uh, you know, once the demolition application for demolition permit is submitted to the building department, I'll sign off on that. Um, and then our next step, of course, is to review the proposed structure for the new house. Okay. I'm sorry, Mr. Zaccardi, you are muted. You have to unmute yourself. There you go. I'd like to thank you all for your time tonight and your considerations. And, I would, uh, well, I, even though we don't, we don't always, uh, <coughs> excuse me, all agree. I do, I do appreciate the banter and I do have empathy for your position. Uh, the, and I, appreciate the fact you don't take it lightly that you do you're you know you do think about things and and pull them apart a little bit and look in i i do appreciate that thank you mr matten and thank you Catherine. <laughs> thank you all right good night and, and thank you good night good night thank you all um Next on the agenda, 93 Main Street. <clears throat> New pool, retaining wall, patio fencing, and landscaping. <clears throat> I see the owner is on as well as the designer. Who's going to be presenting? Good evening. Um, Hi. Good night for all of you. Thanks for all of your time. Um, we would love to have um, Tish present um, the um, plans on our behalf. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tish Campbell. I'm a landscape designer. Um, I'm working with the Beauregards at 93 uh, Main Street. Um, so you have a copy of the plan or shall I put it up to no. share? It's yeah. nice to put it up if you can. We do okay. have it. Okay. But if you can share your screen, that'd be great. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, so uh, this house again is at 93 Main Street on the corner of Elm Street and Main Street. Um, some of you might remember um, this when they had to, uh, they decided to remove the fence off of the retaining wall in the front. So some of you, I think, visited uh, mm -hmm. that, this house before. Um, yes. So we proposed to construct an 18 by 36 pool uh, behind the barn at 93 Main Street. Um, it's on, uh, the pool itself is tucked behind the barn um, and it is largely out of view from both Elm Street and Main Street. Um, the elevation gain from Main Street to the pool area is about 10 feet. Um, so it is really not very visible from Main Street as well. Um, you, in your other document, you can see the photos that we took from Main Street, from Elm Street, to see where up to the pool area. Um, we propose a six foot high pool code black aluminum fence um, to surround the, the pool area. 
Um, I'm not sure if you can see my cursor, but that's where the black aluminum fence is. Mm -hmm. um, we can see it. Okay, great. Um, so this fencing is consistent with um, many fences in the Payer Tree Hill Historic District. So um, at 100 Main Street, 126 Main Street, 137 Main Street, and 146 Main Street. They all have black aluminum six foot high uh, fences. Um, the area around the pool area and around the fence will have uh, landscaping to provide additional privacy for the pool area. Um, and the landscaping would be in keeping with the landscape in the neighborhood type of thing. So it will also maintain the view of the historic home from the street and it won't um, impede the view at all. Um, the black color of the fence will recede um, because it is uh, black aluminum. Um, it's not very visible. It does recede into the landscape. Um, a retaining wall um, is necessary to level the area behind the barn, um, and that will be a, a field stone wall, which is in also in keeping um, with the existing field stone wall that is there. So can you show us? I'm sorry, Tish. Can you sure. show us with your cursor? Sure. Behind oh, the barn. Uh, the field stone wall. Um, field so this stone. is the proposed field stone wall that way. Okay. Got it. Okay. And I can show you, let's see, um, this is the, um, if you can see this document as well, this is the existing field stone wall. Um, mm -hmm. and this is a sample of the black aluminum fencing, the field stone wall. Um, um, we do have a separate, yeah, we, we do have a separate um, handout that you provided for us. Okay. With that, okay. But I, we can't see that right now. Okay. Okay. Um, we only see the plan. We didn't switch to the. Um, oh, okay. I'm sorry. I got gotcha. you. I see. So you you have the separate uh, with the details in it on your in your packet. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Um, let's see. Um, so the field stone wall. I guess it will be. Uh, it, this is the existing field stone wall that goes around the driveway, um, and then this will be the proposed field stone wall to level the pool area. Um, then let's see, the pool equipment will be over in this area um, and the pool equipment will have uh, screening which is designed to look just like the barn doors itself um, so that it will also be hidden all around the, the barn area so that the pool equipment will not be visible. Um, the, let's see, what else can I tell about this? So um, we just believe that this project will not alter the view of the historic property um, and the proposed elements are consistent with the integrity of the historic property. Thank you. Tish, can I ask you something? Sure. Miles, hi. Um, my memory of this Elm Street is that there's another home right behind this property line um, that sits up pretty high. Are they gonna be, staring down onto the pool? Is there um, something in between? There is a, a large row of um, this whole area over here is um, a large row of arborvitaes. Is that okay. what you're talking about, that area? Yes, um, so so you won't see it. Right, and um, this is a um, also a field stone wall, I, or, or this is a, actually an old granite wall, and this okay. is an old granite wall, uh, wooded all here, and arborvitaes all the way there. Yeah. Good. good. So good, they good. will not be able to see it. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from the commission? This house turns over like every 12 months, doesn't it? We've seen no. three. <laughs> I think I've seen three owners in the last two years. We we plan on keeping it. Good. Welcome <laughs> to town or wherever you're from. Thank you. We're we are new to town. We're from across the country. So we love the house and we plan on keeping it. So you think Beauregard is not a southern name. You're not. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's beautiful property. We've known many of the owners that live there. It's lovely. I, I would just like to compliment um, this um, plan because I think it's it was very nicely done, Tish, and I think you made the effort to um, indicate where some visibility may occur. And I, I think it was very complete. So well, thank very you. Nice. There's no other comments or questions. Does anyone want to make a motion? Make a motion. 
Um, um, I'd like to make a motion for a certificate of appropriateness for 93 Main Street for um, pool area plan um, that's been submitted for this meeting. Um, we needed plan date. That's plan date. Um, mm. 10, 20, 21. I don't see that. Good. Okay. And anything else I need to add? I don't have to iterate all these details that have been submitted, do I? No. No. I think uh, to, to acknowledge the fact that they, the details were um, submitted with the application. Yes. Details were submitted with the application. I second it. Second. <clears throat> okay, Carol, how do you vote? Aye. Catherine, how do you vote? Aye. Justin, how do you vote? Aye. Daniel, how do you vote? Yeah. And it's nine for me. Motion passes five to zero. Nice work. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. And thank, thank you. you. Thank you a lot, Tish. She did a lot of work. Yes, she, she did. did. And it's lovely. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Good night, yeah. everybody. Um, Commissioner can members, I, we just. Can I applaud you for getting us through in less than two hours? <laughs> <laughs> we had we had one uh, applicant drop from this week. Continue yeah, the next month for tonight. Just in time for the paintings to actually come the meeting. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so one last thing we have to do is um, to approve the minutes yep. that I sent out earlier this week. Nice. Thank you. Done. Yeah. I've had them. August 19 minutes. I've yes. had them. They looked yep. good to me. Yay. All right. August 19. Okay. And what was the other one? Is there another one? Yes, yes, there were two. I sent. Oh, um, I didn't see two. It's been the October oh, yes. twenty October twenty first. Yes, I read them both. Thank you. <laughs> so if you miss them, <clears throat> it's good reading. I read August nineteen. Daniel, you're in the, are you in the Detroit Metro Airport? No, I haven't left Ann Arbor yet. Oh, oh, oh geez. The flight's not until 11, so I got time. Yeah, oh yeah, you got time. <laughs> I'll bring you back something nice, Andrea. Oh, great. Should we keep talking for you so you have something? Yeah, I mean, I got nothing else to do after this. <laughs> so uh, there's two minutes. It was what, August 19th, is that what you said? Um, wait, it's on the app. Um, wait a minute. Andrea, the agenda says October 7th and October 21st. Well, that's right. It does say that. And that's not correct. Because I sent out, we had, um, I think, July minutes. So what were the dates? Catherine, you're on top of this. Um, October 21st and August 19th. Thank you. August 19th and October 21st. All right. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of, of August 19th? I'll make a motion. Second. I, can't, I don't know if I've ever actually done a motion for minutes. Can we do a motion for minutes? That's it. That's you can say so moved. So moved. All right. And Tracy and we have to do a roll call. I think Carol was seconded. supposed to do a roll call. All right. Um, Daniel, how do you vote? I have seen as not being a member at the time. Right. That's right. Carol, how do you vote? Aye. Catherine, how do you vote? Aye. Justin, how do you vote? Aye. And it's an aye for me. Minutes approved. Um, anyone will make a motion to approve the minutes from October 21, 2020. Make a motion to adopt the meeting minutes as presented from October 21st, 2021. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> it seems a little excessive, but Daniel, how do you vote? <laughs> yeah. Carol, how do you vote? 
Aye. Catherine, how do you vote? Aye. Justin, how do you vote? Aye. That's an aye for me. Minutes approved, five near, five to zero. I just go by the order that you show up on my screen. That's how I pick this. <laughs> I'm always first. It's thank you. <laughs> And you show up as as Tom Pyle, so it's not alphabetical for sure. You know who owns the computer? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's right. first name alpha order. Yeah. Um, okay. Miss Tracy, Miss Tracy, you did a fine job. Thank you very much. Beautiful job. Thank you. I didn't and get the you. notice of. Um, uh, recording until at least thirty minutes in or so, though. Yeah. That was late. It was late, but don't worry. I have great minutes. Okay. I was typing. <laughs> great. Thank so, you. All right. If there's no other business, is there a motion to adjourn? No move. A second. Second. Daniel, how do you vote? Yeah. Carol, how do you vote? Aye. Catherine? Aye. Justin? Aye. Aye for me. Meeting adjourned. All right. Thank Enjoy you. Enjoy your Happy holiday weekend, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank Thanksgiving. Thank you so much. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes. Thank you for showing up, Mike, in case I didn't make it. <laughs> All right. Take care. Good night.